and prove it, family. It has been a moment in time since I have come to you alone. This is me. I am in my podcasting closet, just me, my microphone, my sweatpants. And I'm so excited because today I have got something that I know is going to benefit your life because it has benefited mine and so many other people. Friends, Today, we are going to talk about my five-step pump-up process for speaking, leading meetings, or giving next-level presentations. Okay, so real quick, there you are, right? You are about to step into a speaking engagement, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's in person. You're nervous. You're about to walk out on that virtual or real stage and you're going to talk to one person or to hundreds of people. You've got new content. You're sweaty. Okay. I want you to think about sweaty armpits right now. I am a sweaty gal. Okay. So you're sweaty because you're so nervous. You think you've got it, but you don't got it. Your nerves and Lionel limiting belief. That's right. There's a limiting belief. We're going to call him Lionel limiting belief is there to tell you, girl, sit down. Why should they listen to you? Improve it, fam. Today, I'm going to kick Lionel limiting belief in the face, a hard, swift kick right to the nostril. I'm going to tell him to sit down and quite frankly, shut up. So hold on to your antiperspirants and get ready to wear all the long, silky shirts you want. Today, I'm going to give you my five-step pump-up process for speaking, leading, and giving next-level presentations. Are you ready? Let's go. Are you a leader or change maker inside of your business, organization, or corporation? Are you looking for new, innovative ways to drive morale through the roof? Are you looking for fun and exciting icebreakers, team building exercises, and activities that will foster team growth, friendships, loyalty, and completely transform your organization from the inside out? Have you been searching for a fun and unique way to create change instead of the same old dry, boring leadership books and icebreakers that aren't actually working? Hi, I'm Erin Deal, business improv edutainer, fail fluencer, and professional Zoom who is ready to help you improve it. My mission in life is to help you develop teams and leaders through play, improv, and experiential learning. In this podcast, we will deep dive into professional development, team building, effective communication, networking, presentation skills, leadership training, how to think more quickly on your feet, and everything in between. We have helped everyone from Fortune 500 companies to small mom and pop shops transform their business, their leadership, and their people through play. So grab your chicken hat. We are about to have some fun. Welcome to Improve It, the podcast. Improve It fam. Oh my goodness, we are here. We are back. It's 2022. We are doing this thing. Before we get into these five amazing steps, pump up process, whatever you want to call it, got some quick housekeeping items. So number one, this is a product of an ask that one of our Improve It family members asked me for. And we had a conversation and she said, I am just scared every time I present. How do you do this week after week? I said, hold on, I'm going to create content around this. Let's go. We have something called SpeakPipe. It's in the show notes. It's a link that literally you can send me a voice recording note. I don't have to air it on the episode, but I can also use your voice and your question to spark content and create episodes for you. So if there is something that you really want an answer to, Use that link, hit record. You can do it from your iPhone. You don't have to have a fancy Nancy microphone. Just hit record and it'll send me a question directly to my inbox and I will use that question to create an episode for you. It's so easy, so easy. I would love to create more of what you want, okay? Second, our hybrid hype handout is still there. Right now, when I'm recording this, we are in the midst of another COVID surge. Omnicron is omnipresent 
ever, you know, it's, it's here. Not sure if that was the best pun, but whatever. Uh, so most people right now are doing hybrid or mostly work from home. If you are struggling to create connection in this virtual world, click on the link in the show notes that says hybrid hype. It will take you directly to our website. You will download it directly to your computer or whatever device you're using. This is for you. There are so many steps in there for you to help your team work. All right. And I will leave it at that, but it is such a great PDF. We've gotten some really great feedback on it. So download it. It's free for you directly from the the show notes. Now, second of all, if you have left a review for the show, I want to say thank you so much. If you have not, I would ask you to please leave us a review. Uh, It means so much to us. It's how we get such amazing guests on this show. And that's how people know that the show is successful is through the review. So click on iTunes, hit five stars. And if I get a review from this show in the next week, the next review I get, I'm going to give a free book from one of our previous guests, Andy Storch. It's called Own Your Career, Own Your Life. So if you do do leave us a review, take a screenshot of it, send me an email at info at learn to improve it or a DM uh, at keeping it real deal also in the show notes. And just let me know that was you and I will send you a book from Andy Storch, which is such a great read. I'm in the process of reading it now. And he gave me an extra book to give to our audience members. So Leave us a review, send a screenshot, get your hybrid hype download, leave us a little message on SpeakPipe. That was me clapping. Oh, let's get into it and prove it, fam. So as I mentioned today, we are talking all about a pump-up process for you, for speaking, for leading meetings, for giving those next level com- or presentations or conversations. And I'm going to tell you, I have not been great at this. I have not. I mean, there have been many times in my past that I have sucked, just straight up sucked at presenting, at speaking, at having general conversations. That's a lie. I was born with a gift of gab. But this has not always been easy for me. And I'm going to give you, I was thinking about this as I was putting together some notes for the show. I was like, well, let's think back. And it's kind of like they say, after you've had a baby, you forget what pregnancy is like. That's why you have more children. Um, It's kind of like I forgot what those times (laughs) looked like. And and they were rough in those moments. And we've just moved past them. So I was thinking through all the times that I really just stunk it up at presenting or having to audition or do something that required me to be in the moment, be present and speak to an audience. And I remember the very first time I auditioned for a talent agency in Chicago. And that was a big part of my my past life. I was an actor and I was auditioning all the time for different things. And I remember going to this one agency and we had to do a monologue, a two minute monologue, which is if you're an actor, you know, you have to have a monologue. Halfway through my monologue, I'm giving it to the agency talent agents who own the agency and literally blank. I forgot everything in my monologue. So I just started making stuff up, literally making stuff. I have no idea what I said. It was just completely out the window what I was supposed to say. And things just came into my body. And apparently I stuck with the character choice that the monologue had and somehow got through it because they did hire me to be a part of the agency, which was a shock to everyone. Um, But it was really embarrassing. I remember walking away just being like, what just happened? And then to get really personal on this show. And, you know, I feel like we're there. And if you're a leader who doesn't want to get real, don't listen to this show because sometimes it happens. I remember auditioning for the conservatory at Second City in Chicago. And I auditioned for this multiple times, by the way, because I did not get in. And every time... I would have massive diarrhea. And I I know that is a lot for this show. This is a professional podcast. Okay, yes, I said diarrhea, but I did. And it was terrifying. I would get so nervous. And it was because I was so afraid of what was about to happen. I thought that I didn't deserve to be in the room. I thought I didn't deserve a spot. So, I mean, I really walked in there not feeling great about the situation. And then I even remember, and this is, again, getting really personal, when I started Improve It. And this was early 2014. 
And this is so gross, but I'm just going to say it because now it sounds disgusting. I had so much stress that I picked up an old habit that I had in college when I was really stressed, which was smoking cigarettes, which is like, ew, you know, in 2022. But yeah, I, I would like work a lot and then be like, oh, yeah, cigarette. And then just freak out and the whole cycle will just perpetuate itself because it gave me anxiety and then smoking gave me anxiety because I didn't want anybody to know. So it was this vicious cycle of anxiety. And that was because I was putting myself out there. I was speaking in front of people. This is before we launched and prove it. And I remember we did this big soft launch in Chicago. But I want to tell you these stories because number one, I, you know, I, it, it's important for you to know that I don't just get on this microphone now and feel like it comes easily. I don't stand on stage in front of hundreds of people or give keynotes or virtual keynotes to people across the world without getting a tinge of nerves. I have gotten better because I have done multiple, multiple, multiple repetitions it's like you're working out, right? You lift weights, you build the muscle by doing the reps. So I have put in hours and hours of repetition of doing this. It did not come easy to me at first. It was something I had to work on and craft over time. Now, the other thing that has helped me get better and to do this for a living is this five-step plan that's going to make you want to jump on stage or on Zoom and present to anyone and everyone. So let's get into it. Here are the five steps. It's my five-step pump-up process that's going to help you become a better speaker. It's going to help you lead meetings in a more succinct and impactful way, and it's going to help you give next-level presentations. So number one, before you ever even walk out the door out of your bedroom, wherever it is that you're going, because either we're giving presentations on Zoom or in person, you have got to do this. Number one, dress to impress. So whatever this means to you. Now, this can mean for women listening to the show, maybe you put on a heel. I used to wear a dress, a teal dress and a heel every time I presented to groups. And I'll tell you, that has evolved over time. I don't feel great in heels anymore. I feel like I'm going to fall over. It's not who I am because I've spent the past two and a half years in sweatpants, okay? Um, no, but I actually, if I'm going to do a presentation, a keynote on Zoom, I will put on some black pants. I will put on some fun earrings, a fun top. If I'm going to go out into the world and present, I now have a different style versus the dresses, the cutesy little dresses that I wore. And that's okay. You can evolve. The only thing that matters is that you're dressing to impress, not the audience. This is not for them. This is for you. You got to act like you care. You got to act like you give a poop. I'm talking about poop and armpits in this episode. But what dressing in a way that makes you feel confident does is it sends signals to your brain that you are in control, you are ready, you can and you will rock this. Now, I am... I will say this, I'm a little glammy at times. I prefer to have long eyelashes. I get my eyelashes done. That is a choice. Do I need them? Absolutely not. Does it make me as a human being, me, feel better? Yes, I don't do this for Susie. I don't do it for Susie or Sam. I do this for me. I paint my nails because that makes me feel like I'm more put together. I talk with my hands a lot. So that to me are two things that I also do that make me impress my number one, me. Because if I don't feel good, I'm not going to make you feel good. And if you don't feel good, you're not going to make your team. You're not going to make your audience. You are not going to make anyone who you are speaking to feel good because we feel those vibes, right? So you've got to radiate. You've got a vibe. And that starts with getting yourself in a mindset to put yourself in a place where you feel good. Now, some people, like uh, girls on my team, Christy, first and foremost, when I was wearing a dress and heels, she was like, I'm not wearing a dress and heels. And I said, don't, I don't want you to. I want you to feel comfortable. And she feels so confident in what she wears. Christy, our director of talent. Um, I used to have the guys on our team, sorry guys, 
wear suits and we would all wear suits with ties. And after a while, people said, one of the guys said, Aaron, I feel like people think I'm going to fire them because I'm in this suit. So we changed it up and we said, wear what makes you feel comfortable, wear what you feel confident in, as long as it's snappy, casual, and you are, you are dressing like you give a poop. That's all we care about. But think about what makes you feel good put that on if it's a special necklace or piece of jewelry, or if it's a special ring that I have my grandmother's ring, which I wear a lot to just helps me stand in my power, something meaningful to you. And just know that when you feel good, you're going to make your audience feel good. All right. So here's number two. All right. I want you to arrive or log in early. So that means If you are in person, you are arriving to the venue at least 30 to 45 minutes early. If you are logging in to Zoom or a platform that you're going to be on virtually, you need to log on 30 to 45 minutes early. When you think that you've got this and you've done whatever you're doing a hundred times, if you're leading another team meeting and it's a big one, but you're like, oh, I've done this before. Don't, I need you to think differently. Technology is a blessing and a curse. So this extra time allows you to get your technology in order, go through your slides if you have them, visualize, and allow yourself to see you doing well in this space. So checking out the breakout rooms if you're on Zoom, making sure you've got the survey link pulled up if you have a survey at the end, making somebody a co-host on Zoom so you don't lose the meeting. If you're in person, making sure you've checked with whoever is running the slides to make sure your presentation is up and ready to go, making sure that you visualized yourself in that space, walking around the room. Hey, this is where we'll do this activity. This is where I'll have people go for this. This is how I want people to feel so you can actually see see it in that space. But I really want you to think about arriving early or logging in early because half of my worries, half of this anxiety that I mentioned before was about technology. And when you alleviate those worries and give yourself that extra time, you allow time to figure it out. And if you think about it like this, this is always what I tell clients and people who who aren't in our industry If you think about our actual workshop time, so in person, we have two-hour workshops and virtually our workshops are an hour and a half. We will always arrive 30 to 45 minutes early, no matter what. So if I'm traveling, if I'm going somewhere flying and I've never been to the space before, I'm usually getting there the night ahead of time and I'm going to go in the night before, see the space, do a tech check, make sure I can visualize what we want to see in that space. So it's never just the time that you're doing the actual presentation. It's the time and the prep beforehand too that matters as a speaker. So if you're a leader listening to this and you're like, I don't do keynote speaking for a living, I totally get it. But this applies to you in so many ways. It's not just the meeting that you're giving. It's the prep that you're doing beforehand. It's arriving early to make sure you're the first one there before your team. It's making sure that you have pen and paper and you have the materials needed for them to be successful in the meeting. So thinking through all of these things is just uber important. So number one, you dress to impress. Number two, arrive or log in early. All right, so number three is practice, all right? I want you to practice your lines forwards and backwards. I want you to know the outline of the script or whatever it is that you're presenting or talking about because I want you to go off script. I want you to practice it, doing it just like you want the performance to go. So this goes for hard conversations. This goes for any type of one-on-ones. This goes for any type of interview that you might be nervous about. This goes for presentations. The list goes on and on. And I want you to practice with a person or a video camera. So let me just back up here a minute. My husband, good old John, has been so many things for me. He has been a client, so he'll act as a client and I myself and we'll do a conversation and we'll practice it. He'll act as a team member if I have a hard conversation with a team member. He'll act as a scene partner for me if I'm doing something that has a script and lines. He'll act as an audience member and give me feedback. 
practice in front of anybody who will listen. And usually these are the people closest to us. So ask a parent, ask a friend, ask a roommate, ask anybody, because doing it in front of a person is so so different, so different, hello, Erin, so different than doing it just with off the cuff without having an audience. So really, really practice and see if you can ask a friend, a family member, or somebody to be there for you to really help give you that real life feeling. Now, if you don't have a person in front of you, tape yourself, tape yourself. And then here's the kicker. Watch it. We do something with video. I'm not going to spoil it in our presentation skills workshop and improve it. And I'll tell you what, it has been an eye-opener for so many people because we really don't take the time to see ourselves the way our audience sees us. So I really want to encourage you to practice in front of a person or tape yourself. And then the, the third piece of that is if you're doing something virtually, you can easily just go on to Zoom, put your view on self mode and watch yourself giving the presentation because you'll be able to see how you look to your audience. And just to kind of further that, I always present with my self view on because I want to know how my audience sees me if I'm in a virtual space. So that's number three. Practice, practice, practice. All right. Here is number four, how I pump myself up. A morning routine is a must, a must. Go back episode 10 of the What Was the Improve It podcast, or What Was the Failed It podcast, now the Improve It podcast. And I want you to really focus on doing something in the morning that gets your mind and your body moving. So exercise, even if it's walking up and down the street 30 minutes, walking on a treadmill, whatever, it may be walking back and forth in your hallway if it's too cold, all right? Walking, doing something that moves your body for 30 minutes. You can go on YouTube and get free workouts. So that's something you can literally do for free, but moving your body wakes up your brain. I'm a huge fan of meditation, even if you can give yourself five minutes a day. Exercise, meditation, and then eating something that fuels your brain. So this isn't a bagel. This isn't a crepe. This is not a pancake with tons of whipped cream, although I love them and just fed my toddler one this morning. This is something that gives you energy. So it could be Greek yogurt. It could be a banana with peanut butter. It could be a smoothie. It could be something that just makes you know that you're putting something good in your body. Again, it goes back to your taking care of you here so you can take care of that conversation or your audience that you're going to be working with later in the day. Now, here is another huge piece of this. This is huge. This is what I really want you to pay attention. I want you to get crazy. While you're getting ready, so if you're showering, if you do your hair and makeup, play music that motivates you, especially the day of the big performance. I have created a motivational playlist for myself in the morning, so it's called Morning Motivation. There's people like Sia, Lizzo, Dua Lipa, Tadra Call, Beyonce, all of my favorites, and I play them as I'm getting ready. And as you're getting ready, you're generally looking in the mirror. So one of one of my favorite, favorite things to do, and I got this from Mel Robbins. She has a book out called High Five Habits, is to give myself a high five in the mirror in the morning. And by doing that, you are telling yourself, and this book is filled with science about why this is actually impactful. When you do that, your brain starts to recognize, okay, I'm in control. I see you. You've got this. And you just start to feel differently. So starting off your day with a morning routine is so important. All right. So you've got your dressing to impress. All right. So that might happen after your morning routine. Then you're arriving early. You've already practiced. And now you're going to power pose right before you go on stage. And what is a power pose? If you've not seen the TED Talk by Amy Cuddy, all about power posing, give it a giggle, check it out. It is so important and so impactful. Power posing 
is standing in a position that gives you power. It could be your arms wide out in a T where you're open, willing to receive. It could be your arm up in the air like Superwoman, your hands on your hips like Superman. It could be you are just standing there receiving with your arms just wide out at the at a, like a low V. If you're a cheerleader, you know what I'm talking about. Low V, okay. You're standing in this position for two minutes. Before I do a workshop, before my team and I do a workshop or we go on stage, we stand in a power pose. And what that does is it sends signals to your brain that you are open, you are ready, you are going to receive and you're going to give. And you're telling yourself that you're powerful and in control in that moment. When I am facilitating, I do this and now it's sort of second nature. It's almost as if a different force jumps in my body. And I know this sounds crazy. So you're like, okay, hippity dippity dude, da woohoo girl. Listen, this works for me. I stand in this power pose. And what happens is while I'm standing in that pose, I'm opening myself up and I literally say, let me say what you need me to say today. Now. I'm a spiritual human being. I believe in universal love. I truly believe that we are all here on this planet for a reason, and I know my purpose. So when I stand with my power pose and that power, I am allowing that energy to come into my body. So somebody in that room that I'm about to walk into needs to hear it, and I need the vessel to walk through me to guide me to say what needs to be said and to give the energy that somebody in that room needs to feel. Now, let's say this, my amazing, amazing, amazing Improve It family, not everyone in that room is going to like what you have to say and they may not even like you. Let me just say that. They might not even like you. And what we have to do is realize that we are here for a purpose and a reason, and we are the leaders that we are supposed to be. We are in that room for a reason. And if you can feel the confidence through your body, the people on the receiving end will feel that confidence too. And they might not like you or what you have to say, but they are going to feel what you need them to feel. That's been a really hard realization for me is I was patty people pleaser. I want everybody to like me growing up, but I've started to realize I'm an acquired taste. And if you don't like the flavor, that's okay. But I've got something to teach you. And my Improve It fam, you have so much to teach your teams. You have so much to teach the people that you lead. You have so much to give to the world because you're listening to this show because you care because you want to be your best self. So when you stand in that position of power, that power pose, I want you to feel it. And I don't want you to care what anybody in the room thinks about you. I just want you to walk in that room and know that you're there for a reason. You're there for your assignment. And you will feel so much confidence rise through your body. It's such an amazing feeling. And then the moment you step on stage, you walk in the conference room, you jump on the Zoom, that confidence will be there. And you'll know why you're there. You don't have to worry about what anybody else thinks because guess what? They're not there to really care about anybody else's feelings. They care about themselves too. You're there to care about the way that you carry yourself and the message that you're going to deliver. So I want you to give yourself some love. I want you to save this episode. If there were parts of this episode that resonated with you, I want you to come back to it, send it to a friend who might need to hear it. But I want you to save this conversation that I'm having with you today because I'm talking to you. I can't see you, but I know you because I am you. And I have been so scared walking into rooms and I've done it time and time again, so much so when I finally realized it wasn't about me. It was about making the audience feel and just allowing myself to come through in what I was teaching, but remembering that it's about the people in that room. It's about invoking 
a spirit and a vibe and allowing the people on the other side to walk out better than they walked in. So that's what I want you to think about. This is your pump up. The five-step pump up process works, but it's also all about dressing to impress, arriving early, practicing your morning routine, power posing. All of that will not work if you don't believe to the core of who you are that you have got this and you have got a message to deliver, that you are a coach, you are a mentor, you are a leader, you are a human being put on this earth for a reason greater than you even know. And so the moment you step into that power is the moment that your life is going to change. And I want you to know that it takes time. It's not going to be super easy the first time, but the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. And the more you believe in that in you, the better you will become and the better you will make the lives of the people around you. So again, I'm telling you this because this works for me. And we teach on presentation skills here at Improve It. Our overarching message there is positivity plus preparation equals a productive presentation. And some of the things I pulled out of today's episode are involved in that workshop. So if you have a team who is struggling with presenting and they have to present or have conversations, maybe they're a sales team, maybe they're um, an internal team and they just need help doing presentations to internal members. Maybe they work with a lot of data and they struggle with telling a story in a compelling way. That workshop is really great for building that confidence. And it's really, really great, especially for the people who you know on your team who struggle with Lionel, limiting belief. Remember Lionel? He got a swift kick to the face. I'll tell you that. Lionel, bye. Be gone. So my friends at Improve It, my Improve It family, thank you so much for listening today. If you feel it in your heart to leave a review, I would greatly appreciate it. We have so many amazing guests coming up on this show and we want to keep bringing you amazing content. So that review just means a lot. It takes 30 seconds of your time on iTunes. So again, thank you so much for being here, for being you. Let these five pump up hacks help you be the best speaker, help you lead your team and give next level presentations like the boss that you are. Improve it. Keep failing. Keep learning. Keep improving because you know this. The world needs that special it that only you, that's why you can bring. I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Improve It. I am so happy you are along for the ride. If you enjoyed this show, head on over to iTunes to leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Now, if you're really feeling today's show and you've improved it even just a little bit, please take a screenshot and tag me at Keeping It Real Deal on Instagram and share it in your stories. I'll see you next week, but I I want to leave you with this thought. What did you improve today and how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I am rooting for you and the world needs that special it that only you can bring. See you next time. <laughs>